Hey church, we now come to the very last reading of our uh, readings this year through the Bible. Congratulations for making it all the way through. Uh, I know that there are many of you, this is your first time to have read all the way through. And many have told me this has been an incredible experience. Some of you have read through the Bible before, but it's the first time that you've read through with a lot of friends, with your, with your church family. And that has been a meaningful experience. And, and so now we come to the last few chapters. And, and I wanna just remind us that the Bible is not a collection of separate stories as much as it is a grand narrative about one big story. It's the story of how God loves us and how he has rescued us from our sin and he invites us to be a part of his family and to live in all of eternity with him. And that brings me to Revelation chapter 21. This is what the Bible says. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first uh, earth has passed away, had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And so what the Bible teaches is that, that all of the difficulty and all of the pain and all of the suffering and all of the struggle and all of the injustices and all of the viruses and all of the, the difficulties that we experience in this life, one day when we get to heaven are going to pass away and will become completely untrue. That is the future reality for every single believer. Therefore, all of us as Christians can say all of the bad things that have happened in this life will one day be turned to good. And the truly good things in this life can never be taken away and the very best is yet to come. That's why I always say Christianity is a futuristic religion. And, and what you believe about your future is gonna impact your right now. This is our future. This is what the Bible teaches us about what our future will be. And I find it interesting that when you read the entire Bible, what you learn is that we start off in a garden and then we end up in a city, a beautiful city, really a garden city, a city that is full of trees, a city that's full of rivers and lakes, a beautiful city, but it's a city. And so what does that say to us about how we are to live in the right now? Well, first of all, I think that it means that we should love the city. And that's an important message for all of us who are here in Oklahoma City, that, that God wants us to love the city. A couple of stories as an example. First of all, remember the story of Jonah. Jonah hated Nineveh and he was angry with God because God saved Nineveh. And God reminded Jonah that he loved that great city. And then the other story that I think is helpful to remember is the story of the uh, the, the Jews in exile in Babylon, they hated Babylon. And yet God told them, you are to love the city of Babylon. You're to pray for the welfare of the city of Babylon, because when the city is flourishing, then you are flourishing. And so God wanted them to love the city of Babylon. And, and so God wants us as his followers, as his people to love the city. A, a second thing that I would want us to remember is that God wants us to live as citizens of the future city. So even though we're in a human city, that we are to be citizens of a future city, which means that we are to resist the oppression and the injustices of this human city, that we are to live our lives in such a way that pushes back against the darkness of this world. And it has many, that has many implications for the way that we live. It means that you, perhaps as a Christian educator, look at life differently than those who don't know Jesus. You, you, you see your work, you see your role as being someone who is constantly pointing people to the glory of God. It means that you, maybe as a Christian business person, uh, 
uh, go about your work in a different way. You see your business, you see your work in a way that, that glorifies God and, and brings flourishing to the city and, and brings justice to the city and brings life to the city. So because we're citizens of a future city, we live in a different way than those who don't know Jesus. And, and, and so it has implications for the way that we see ourselves. A, a third thing that I would point out about being citizens of a future city is that we have a different identity. Our identity is in Christ. Why? Because he died for us, because he gave his life for us. Uh, what we see here in this picture in the last few chapters of the book of Revelation is that this holy city is gonna be a city where the rivers are flowing. It's gonna be a city where there is healing, it's going to be a city where there is no night, where there's no tears, where there's no suffering. Well, why is that? Well, well the reason that, that there is an abundance is because Christ himself has given his life for us. And, and, and because he took on our thirst, we never have to thirst again. Because he took on our suffering, we never have to suffer. But because he gave his life for us, we flourish in the life to come. And, and so we are his people. And because of what he has done for us on the cross, uh, we spend an eternity with him. And, and that changes the way that we see life and it changes the way that we see others. And, and, and all of that is a result of having our identity in Christ. And, and so my encouragement for all of us as we think about this beautiful picture of the future city is to remember we are to love the city. Remember that we are citizens of a future city. And remember that we are uh, people who have our identity in Christ. Uh, a great picture for us as we end up our study together. God bless you, church family.